Ever get one of those, whoa, that's a lot feelings when a friend tells you about something happening in their life? Oh, totally. Like you're suddenly grateful your life isn't a headline. Exactly. That's kind of how I felt hearing about a friend's international divorce. I mean, love knows no borders and all, but apparently neither does legal drama. That's more common than we think, right? Well, Especially these days. Way more. Which brings us to this deep dive. We're looking at a case straight from the Philippine Supreme Court. Buckle up. It's Sholabakaltus Asilo versus, get this, presiding judge Maria Luisa Lezel G. Gonzalez Betik. Okay, someone really liked their vowels, but I'm guessing this is about more than just a mouthful of names. You got it. Think love, divorce, international laws, the whole shebang. Important stuff if you're thinking about a cross-cultural marriage. Okay, so set the scene for me. So we've got Sheila, Filipina, marries Tommy, American citizen, in Hong Kong. Sounds picture perfect so far, right? Like the start of a postcard, yeah. Hold on, plot twist. They divorce, and Sheila's the one who initiates it. No biggie in many places, but here's the kicker. The Philippines. No absolute divorce for Filipinos. Ah, okay, so that complicates things big time. Exactly, which is why Sheila's case is a prime example of something that trips a lot of people up. How does a foreign divorce work when one spouse is Filipino and the Philippines wants nothing to do with divorce in the first place? Yeah, it feels like one of those legal riddles wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. And you know we love unraveling those. <laughs> but before we get into the nitty gritty of Sheila's situation, what's the deal with the Philippine legal system and these international marriage cases? All right, so picture this. The Philippines, right? It's like this island legally speaking, in a sea of divorce laws. Seriously, one of the few places globally without full-on divorce for its citizens. So no quick see ya if you're Filipino and married. Annulment's the route there, but that's a whole other legal jungle. <laughs> but back to the case. The Philippines still cares about what went down in Hong Kong because Sheila's a citizen. Think of Article 26 uh, of their family code, like the safety net for Filipinos in these international marriages. Safety net? How so? It basically makes sure they're not penalized for something that was totally legal where it happened, you know, prevents messy situations if the foreign spouse is the one to pursue the divorce. So it's like the Philippines saying, we get it, international marriages exist, we're not trying to punish you for what happened elsewhere. Exactly. It's about fairness at the end of the day. Okay, that makes sense. So no easy divorces for Filipinos, but this Article 26-2 is there to even the playing field a bit. Yep. Got to protect their citizens. Right. So back to Sheila. She's gone through this divorce, wants to move on, but her home country is not exactly giving her the green light just yet. What happens next? Well, it gets twisty. Remember how I said it gets complicated? Her petition to make that Hong Kong divorce official back home dismissed. And not for the reason you'd think. Seriously, what could be so major that it throws off the whole thing? We're talking procedural details here, like forgetting a key step in a recipe. Okay, spill the tea. What you miss? Ultimate facts. Think of them as the crucial bits of info your whole argument hinges on. The make or break details. Exactly. Yeah. And Sheila's petition. Missing one key ingredient. Tommy's nationality. Didn't state it outright. Case dismissed. Wait, really? It all comes down to that. Even though they were married, divorced, the whole nine yards. That's the thing about the law, right? Sometimes the smallest thing can derail everything. Wild. So proving Tommy was American, that was vital. But why? Because... And this is where it gets really interesting. Article 26 too, that safety net we talked about. It only kicks in if that foreign divorce is valid by the other spouse's national laws. Oh, I see. So it's not enough to say, hey, we divorced. The Philippines wants to make sure everything adds up on both sides of the equation. Exactly. Like, show your work, not just the answer. Makes sense. All right, so things are heating up for Sheila, and we're just getting started. More twists and turns to come in this case, so stick with us. So they want the receipts. Proof. Not just promises. 100%. And that's where it gets really tricky, because you've got Philippine law, you've got American divorce law, and they don't always play nice together. It's like trying to translate between two totally different languages, except instead of words, it's legal jargon. And the stakes are high. We're talking about someone's life, their future. But wait, it gets even wilder. Remember how Sheila's trying to sort all this out? Oh, this is where Tommy makes a reappearance, right? He does. And he doesn't just reappear, he remarries. No way. Wait, so he's already moved on. Full speed ahead. And get this, he marries another Filipino woman right there in the Philippines. Hold on, hold on. So wouldn't that automatically make the divorce valid in the eyes of the Philippine government? I mean, he can't be married to two people at the same time, yeah. right? You'd think so, wouldn't you? 
But here's the thing. Philippine law, they like their evidence. They want the facts, the paperwork. Just because someone at the local registrar's office says, okay, you're good to go, get hitched, doesn't mean the courts are bound by that. So it's like different parts of the government aren't on the same page. Exactly. And that's precisely why having a legal expert in your corner <laughs> is crucial. They can navigate those bureaucratic mazes, make sure everything's legit. Because the last thing you want is to think everything's fine and dandy, only to find out later that, legally speaking, you're in a really messy situation. It happens more than you'd think. And that's not even the half of it. This whole case, it really highlights why international family law is its own beast. Right, because you're not just dealing with different languages. You're dealing with totally different legal systems, different ways of doing things. And the stakes couldn't be higher. We're talking about someone's marital status, their ability to remarry, their rights here in the Philippines. Imagine trying to travel with your kids or claim an inheritance and hitting a wall because legally your home country doesn't recognize your divorce. Talk about a nightmare. Exactly. And it's something the Philippines take seriously, especially with their stance on divorce. It's a tough balancing act, respecting foreign laws while still upholding their own. It's like trying to solve a really complex puzzle where the pieces keep changing shape. Love that. And thinking of puzzles, I think it's time we untangled this whole Article 26-2 business. Yes. Let's dive into the heart of the matter. What exactly does it say, and how does it apply to someone like Sheila? All right, so in a nutshell, Article 26-2 is like the bouncer at the club of foreign divorce recognition in the Philippines. Okay, so it decides who gets in and who stays out. Exactly. It basically says that if a Filipino citizen's foreign spouse gets a divorce that also allows them to remarry under their country's laws, then the Philippines will recognize those effects for the Filipino spouse too. So it prevents scenarios where, say, the Filipino is still considered married back home, but their ex is off living a whole new life elsewhere. Get the nail on the head. It's about fairness, you know? Preventing Filipinos from getting stuck in legal limbo because of what their ex did. Okay, so it makes sense. But there's always a but, isn't there? There is, and it's a big one. Burden proof. It's on the Filipino spouse to gather all the necessary documents, all the evidence, to prove the foreign divorce checks all the boxes. Which brings us back to Shella and that missing piece of the puzzle, right? Exactly. That's where it all went sideways. She needed to show, not just tell. The court wanted concrete proof that Tommy's divorce meant he could remarry under American law. And I'm guessing that information isn't exactly easy to find, especially when you're juggling two different legal systems. You're telling me. It can get crazy complicated, which is why having a good lawyer is essential. Someone who speaks both legal languages. Well, precisely. Someone who can bridge that gap, connect the dots. And I think that's what's so fascinating about cases like Sheila's. They're not just about one person's divorce. They're about this larger conversation the Philippines is having. How do we balance our own values with this increasingly globalized world? It's like they're trying to figure out the rules of a game that's constantly changing. Perfectly said. And that's why we need to pay attention to these stories. They're like windows into how the law is evolving in real time. But for Sheila, the story isn't over yet. We left her at a crossroads, remember? Petition denied. What happens next? So it's not a game over for Sheila, more like a press start to try again? Pretty much. Yeah. The court left the door open for her to file again. Okay, so there's still a chance. But what does she need to change in round two? Remember those ultimate facts we talked about? The must-haves? She's got to make sure her next petition hits all the right notes? No missing ingredients this time. Exactly. Tommy's nationality, front and center and clear evidence that their divorce allows him to remarry under U.S. law. So it's not enough to just want it recognized. you got to play by the Philippine legal system's rules, too. 100%. And I think that's what's so interesting about all of this. The Philippine legal system, it's not stuck in the past. It's adapting, figuring out how to balance its own beliefs with, well, reality international marriages are happening. It's like they're trying to navigate a world that's changing faster than ever. Exactly. And cases like Sheila's, they're more than just personal stories. Mm -hmm. You know, they're shaping how the law evolves. Wow, that's a powerful thought. So it's not just Sheila's future on the line. It's about setting precedents for similar situations down the road. Exactly. These cases, they're like building blocks, shaping the future of the law. And that's why we talk about them, why they matter beyond the headlines. Because they shine a light on those gray areas, the places where different legal worlds collide. Exactly. And honestly, that's what makes this whole area so fascinating. It's law, but it's also about people, about cultures, about navigating a world that's more connected than ever. 
It makes you realize how much we take for granted, assuming things will just work the same way everywhere. Right. Like, just because something's a given in one country doesn't mean it's going to fly in another. And that's especially true with something as important as marriage and divorce. It's like that saying, assume makes it, well, you know the rest. Exactly. So if there's one thing to take away from all of this, from Sheila's story and this whole deep dive, knowledge is power. Do your homework. Don't just assume. <laughs> and definitely talk to the experts. 100%. Because navigating international family law on your own, that's one legal adventure I wouldn't recommend. Not unless you're a lawyer yourself and love a challenge. But seriously, thanks for breaking it all down for us. This has been eye-opening. Anytime. These are important conversations to have. The more we understand about these complexities, the better equipped we are to navigate them. Absolutely. And for all of you listening, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll see you next time for another fascinating exploration of the law and how it shapes our lives.